Hey everybody, Mr. Grove here. Today we are going to talk about the class Insecta. And so the insects are going to be part of the phylum Arthropoda. Uh, they will be part, part of the subphylum Uniramia. So um, because they're so big, we got to break them into subphylum. Uh, and they are one of the two subphylums that have mandibles, so they have jaws for chewing. So um, in uh, this particular subphylum, Uniramia, will have the insects, um, which is a bunch, the millipedes, which will be the diplopods, and then the centipedes, which will be the chilopods. Uh, but definitely the majority are going to be the insects. So there are more insects uh, in the class Insecta than there are all other animals combined uh, in the entire world. So they are very good at what they do and very good at surviving. Uh, and it is very common to break the insects to go one step further from class insecta down to the orders. Uh, and so uh, some common orders, as you'll see here, Coleoptera is a whole bunch of beetles as well. So there's more beetles than anything that we've talked about up to this point uh, combined. Uh, our flies are the diptera, um, leptoptera is the butterflies, hymenoptera, ants and wasps, some bees. And so uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the orders uh, a little bit later in another slide. So uh, body plan uh, for insects, that head, thorax, and the abdomen, three-part body plan. Uh, head's going to be the sensory stuff. we got our compound eyes. That's where the antenna are attached. And we do have mandibles. Now, sometimes the mandible might be modified based on what the insect does. So if you're a fly, your mandible jaws are more for licking. If you're a mosquito, um, it's going to be a long piercing set of jaws. If you are a grasshopper, you're going to have a chewing kind of mandible to chew those leaves up. Um, thorax is where the wings and the legs are going to attach. So for it to be an insect, you have to have six legs. So that's a little different than our arachnids, a little different than our crustaceans. Uh, and then the abdomen is where all the gooey parts are. That's going to be the digestive and all the other organs. Uh, it is important to note that insects, we have a, an open circulatory system, um, and uh, it works pretty well for them, actually, though. Uh, and so that's also where our segmentation is going to take place at. Um, life cycle. Uh, so oftentimes, uh, we kind of break it down as to two different components, uh, either a complete metamorphosis or an incomplete metamorphosis. Uh, and so for uh, the life cycle for a complete metamorphosis, that word metamorphosis means change. So we're changing from an egg to a larva, uh, and then we do the whole cocoon thing, and that's the official name would be chrysalis. And then as the adult emerges from the chrysalis, it's ready to lay eggs again. But we've completely changed our appearance and our characteristic traits uh, during the life cycle. Uh, the incomplete metamorphosis is going to be the adult lays the eggs and then they hatch into a nymph and another nymph and another nymph as they basically shed the exoskeletons. And then eventually they uh, shed the exoskeleton to where they can molt and get the wings and then become uh, fertile adults then to lay more eggs. So this would be like your grasshoppers, praying mantises. Um, and so not uncommon to have, you know, hundreds of teeny tiny little miniature looking praying mantises or grasshoppers. Uh, that's incomplete metamorphosis. Uh, between the two, we'd probably give the advantage to complete because that cocoon is pretty solid and uh, that, that young larva can, has its food and protection in there. Um, we battle with bagworms at our house on our blue spruce trees and uh, it's hard to get rid of them. The, that cocoon protects them from spray, can, protects them from predators, uh, and so um, they do just fine, sadly. Uh, but if you are a nymph, you're a little tiny guy trying to find food, trying to become from being food. So um, definitely a little tougher go for you. So that's the life cycle. Um, the other big, big, big advantage, I mean, like a superpower, uh, for in insects is going to be flight. And so these are really the first things we've talked about uh, and so one of very few things that have flight. Um, so flight lets you escape danger and then reach new food sources. 
Um, these wings are kind of a, a really kind of lacy, kind of fibrous um, mesh. Uh, next time you get a chance to look at an insect, look at those really closely. And it's composed of chitin, which is a, a real strong polysaccharide. Uh, most insects will have two pairs of wings. Um, typically, our wingless are the fleas and lice. Um, and depending on how those wings are configured, um, sometimes one pair is used to protect the first pair, um, sometimes they're more of a protective thing, but um, the advantage of flight is a huge key component for insect success, which is why there's so many of them. Uh, another thing is insects uh, can be somewhat social. Um, so like bees and termites um, can live in colonies, ants live in colonies uh, to where there's kind of a caste system. So uh, different members of the um, colony have different jobs and do different things. Uh, and so um, again, very, very successful at what they do. Um, some insect relatives, so also in that subphylum Uniramia, are the centipedes, that's the order Chilopoda, and then the millipedes, the order Dilopoda, um, uh, or class, sorry. Um, and so uh, typically you can tell the difference. Um, these guys are going to be carnivores, predators, uh, the centipedes, and they have one pair of legs per each segment, whereas a millipede you can see has more than one pair of legs per segment. And typically these guys are herbivores. So um, centipedes are very good predators trying to find other things. So, um, And then lastly, these are kind of some of our common uh, insect orders for what we do for our little miniature insect collection in class. Um, so Lepidoptera is going to be your butterflies and moths, Coleoptera your beetles, Diptera your flies and mosquitoes, Odonata uh, your dragonflies and damselflies, Hymenoptera, waspies, and ants. Hemiptera is kind of the classic bug um, order, so leaf bugs, stink bugs. Uh, Isoptera is your termites, Homoptera, your cicadas, Siphonoptera, your fleas, and Orthoptera, uh, grasshoppers, crickets, praying mantis, and walking sticks. Uh, these are not by any means all of the orders, but just a lot of the common ones. And you, you'll notice that suffix terra, uh, which is basically wings. So that's the insects. Uh, they are really good at what they do. There are a lot of them, and they've been around a long time. So I hope that was helpful.